emits primary ignition. I'm just not the, the hero type, clearly. What a piece of junk. Enterprise, this is the captain. I got a bad feeling about this. It's all part of the plan. Engage. Welcome back to Podcast 2 for 1. I'm your host, Donovan Thompson, with my co-host, Daniel Wingfield. And, to set, and today is episode 203 of Podcast 2 for 1, youtube.com slash 2 for 1 studios. It's the best place to consume all the content. And if you didn't know, listeners, and let's be honest, you probably did not, we are sponsored by Capal Comics, located at 4047 East Co. Avenue in Sherwood, Arkansas. There they have comic books, collectibles, graphic novels, and of course, special guest appearances throughout the year. Kapow. Kapow. Daniel, it's 203, and we are talking the first season of X-Men 97. And about some thoughts. Do you? Share. Yeah, Please I do. Share. I do. Please share. I do. Yeah. Um, overall, I, I, like I said, I think we did an episode um, a few weeks back now. The first where two we episodes, talked about maybe. Something like that. Yeah. First two or three, something like that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll kind of summarize that a little bit where um, I never watched the original animated series. My jam is always Spider-Man. And uh, I was never a huge X-Men fan. Now, since then, I've, I've come to, lo- to like the X-Men and to love them in some ways. Especially Wolverine, of course. I've seen the movies ad nauseum. Um, and I'm very excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. It's probably my most anticipated movie of the year. How could it not be? Um, and I liked the show we were getting. I was enjoying it. I It was kind of hard for me to latch on completely because, again, I it's like watching, it's like missing five seasons of a show that you've never seen and then jumping to season yeah. six. That's what it is. Um, but I, I liked the animation a lot. I was liking the cartoon storytelling. And then the Genosha episode happened, which I don't think we ever talked about. And No, we hadn't watched that by the time. Yeah, so the internet, the internet was ablaze. And I, I liked it a lot. I thought I liked the stakes. I liked that the world was getting kind of um, more real. Um, but it really didn't really hit home for me until these last three episodes. And mm-hmm. particularly the last episode, which was a longer episode too. Mm-hmm. And I think ultimately, my ultimate consensus is, um, if you're a fan of the old show, then you're going to love this show. And I do really enjoy it. I think there's some great things to love. I love the cameos. There's some, mm-hmm. um, of course, yeah. we saw Spider-Man um, in I think the third to last episode, which yeah. I was like, man, are we going to get Spider-Man more in the final? We didn't, but we did get Iron Man Captain America. We did see Peter Parker with Mary Jane, which is a big cliffhanger from the original animated series. So that was awesome. Okay. Um, yeah, they're like in the crowd watching the thing, yeah, which yeah. is like, yeah, that was the uh-huh. big thing when the show ended was this Peter, he's going to find Mary Jane in the multiverse, essentially. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah, and so we got that answered. And so that's a cool little thing to answer for fans like me who's watched it 25 years ago. Yeah. And so stuff like that, you know, you, you can never tell yourself even five years ago that someone is going to give you an answer to that mystery. And I was thinking about this yesterday, like it's so wild how we latch on to little things like that. Like, Oh, it was never answered. And it's a cartoon. It's a story, but how much it means to us when years later, someone answers it in some official capacity. And I think that was, that's that alone is special for just for a few frames of a cartoon, but back to X-Men, there's some genuine, I think, good dialogue in the show on this last couple yeah. episodes um, that I was really, I was like, man, I actually like this. Of course, it, that's mixed in with like very kind of over the top, kind of cheesy cartoon, very soap opera di- dialogue. But I really enjoyed it. The action's great. I thought the stakes were great. And overall, I I thought they, they did a really good job. And I do think that the, sh- the season as a whole it does kind of this weird, like it kind of jumps around and kind of plots and it kind of does cram a lot into one season. And so I do wonder if as a filmmaker or as someone who maybe wanted something where it was all about Sebastian or all about um, all the, you know, I I just feel like there was some times we were kind of straying away from the plot and doing other things like Jubilee's thing or whatever. And sure. Um, even Storm's thing, which was cool, but it's like we took her powers away to give them back a couple episodes later. Um, so I, I just kind of wonder overall some of the the flow of the show. But I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to season two. 
I hope this makes the powers that be say, hey, we want to do an animated universe. We want, I want Iron Man back. I want his TV show. I want the amazing. to see him in Cap too. Oh, yeah, man. Original yeah. uh, costumes, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I want Spider Man. Like, I mean, I, this whole thing would be a thousand percent worth it to me if, if this gave interest into the Spider Man shit, which, how could it not? And, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. see how they couldn't look now I feel like last time we talked I was under the impression that there was already going to be a revival of the 90s Spider-Man show. No, there's okay. nothing confirmed. The showrunner of the show, I think who also worked on um some Marvel stuff or was working on Marvel stuff. Um he on the he was a showrunner on the cartoon and he was like, "Yeah, I'll do it. Like I'll come back and I'll I'll write episodes and Sure. Christopher, I think Christopher Daniel is the voice actor who is like my, it's like, that's like Kevin Conroy to Batman for me for right, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, man, like just, I, I don't even care if it, it's like, if it failed, I don't even care. Like, I just want it. Like, I just, yeah. I want to see more, you know? So anyway, sure. what are your thoughts, Daniel? Yeah, I think I'm with you. You know, obviously <clears throat> I'm, I was as a fan of the nineties X-Men show, but I wasn't like someone that got to watch it all the time. Um, I don't know exactly what why that was, but for some reason I don't know if it if it aired at the same time that it did. I I always watch Spider Man on Saturday mornings, um, and so maybe X Men was right before that or right after. I just don't. I remember seeing a few episodes, but not just. I don't remember too much of the plot from the show, even as a kid. Whereas I remember like many different plots from Spider Man. Uh, I remember set, like many different episodes where I'm like I can still remember how that episode went. Um. So, you know, I was coming in as, I guess, maybe a casual fan of the 90s show, but a big fan of the X-Men. I, I do really enjoy the original three, especially X2, I think is really, really good. Um, mm-hmm. Logan is still one of the best superhero movies, I think, that have been made. And, you know, that's a very, it's a, it's a Wolverine, but it's really an X-Men story, too. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a, the X-Men are highly, a big part of the plot, especially Charles. Um you know, and if, so, if listeners want a recap of our thoughts on that, we do have a Logan baby cast, I think, spoiler breakdown we did a couple years back now. Go on, Daniel. Such a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, coming into it, I think I was like you, the first half or the first few episodes, I'm like, okay, I mean, like, they're doing it with the animation. They obviously care. Like, you could tell there was a lot of love for this show and these characters and the people coming back to do it. And I think that alone makes you more invested in it or want to be more invested in it. Um, and then, yeah, the Genosha episode, it did very much change the pace and the and the stakes and everything for this show. And really, it, it also showed you that, like, from a writing point, they weren't afraid to take risks and just do big things in the plot. Like, you know... I feel like there, you know, there's a version of the show that can't could come back and basically be like a highlights of the greatest moments where they just kind of let all the characters have their moments to like, you know, reminisce, like kind of, you know, almost being like a, a like a revival season where it's like they're not going to take risks. They're just trying to like kind of bank on the nostalgia for the old show and just making a nostalgic show. This isn't that. This was like let's take huge plot points in the past show and just nuke them or just take them in this direction and in that direction. And I just thought that that also is just when the show starts taking risks like that and like making big plot choices like that, that locked me in even further. And then like you, I think at the end where it's like, it really started picking up the pace and kind of building on itself. Everything started coming together and it finished really strong. I don't think it was a perfect season. Um, there was some episodes that I was less interested in or, or, or it took more effort to, to stay engaged into. Um, and even to just to a pacing level, I think like, I feel like there was a lot of monologues, you know what I mean? And like, mm, like yeah. I, <clears throat> I get it, but like at the same that time, Magneto stick though. Yeah, I get it. it but like it, it just, even Charles had a few though too. Um, like, they and, stick too. and even Matt Cyclops did, I feel like Jean Grey, every, every, it, it just feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, uh, monologues. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and just at that point, like every, every part of every episode wasn't just gripping me to the screen. Um, but when it popped off, it popped off and it was really good. I agree with you. The writing was better than it had to be. Honestly, like mm-hmm. it, it could have been more, um, 
generic and it could have been like it could have been less smart in some ways it could have been uh less less like poignant even like i feel like what i do like about this is that it felt like it really mirrored real world issues inside of what it was doing with its universe that like you know what i mean like and that's what i think comics have always done that right comics have always kind of interpreted the real world into the art's always done that Exactly. And, and, and so it, they didn't, but they didn't have to, again, that's something they didn't necessarily have to do with this show. And it probably still could have satisfied, you know, the, the major fans at least. And so, yeah, it, it's, 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 I would say it's a brave show. Um, I really, um, really love where it's headed and what it's doing in this revival sense. Um, because it's, it's really not just reviving things to visit them again. It's reviving things to, do something new with them, it seems like. And um, I'm excited to see where the ride continues to go. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And this is someone who I, I, if you put a gun to my head and you want to do some like Marvel trivia, as far as the comics goes, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be very good in the X-Men realm. I couldn't tell you like a lot of the storylines happening. I know some of the bigger ones. I know some of the major plot points. But I couldn't like just tell you like a good Spider Man or, or any other character, and uh, I I do know just from my research and looking at feedback from people that they really kind of pulled a lot of inspiration from a lot of different comic storylines. Um, the guy who wrote this or the showrunner, I believe, for season one, and I think season two was a guy named Bo DeMaio. The guy and that got he fired. was fired right yeah. fired right before the first episode came out. And and very it, it's interesting. It was very like like there were socials that were scrubbed. It was very very sudden. I don't know and, what happened. And very like like they were trying to make it not a big deal. Like trying to kind of brushing it under the rug. It was not a big announcement. It was it was it was something they were trying to not call attention to. Yeah. Uh, but how and could that not very... be a big deal when the creator of a show gets fired right before it comes out? Like you know what I mean? Yes. Like that's... And, and and I think season one and season two, at least on the audio side, was all, already recorded. Sure. Um, yeah. And I think and it's written, been renewed. Probably too. And, or, and or like a, yeah. Yeah. So it's taken a long time for this show to go down the pipeline. And um, and so, so anyway, uh, Bo DeMaio, from what I understand, oh, he's been very active on social media. Like every time an episode drops, he still responds to the I fans. I did see he that, kinda, yeah. He's, he answers questions. He acts like it's his, it is his show, but it, it is yeah. weird to see. It's weird the guy that's fired that's not going to be there for season two, even though his name will still be on a lot of the credits for his work on it. It'll probably still say produced, executive produced by Bodo Mayo, written by and all that sort of things. Um, Man, you got to really, you got to really mess up to make Marvel fire you like that right before some, like. Well, the rumor is that he had, he has or had an OnlyFans and um, account and I, like I don't he know. Was a mem- like he was, uh, he was making content. Yes, yes. Of himself. Um, yes. And uh, if you look at his Twitter image, or sorry, his X platform image, like up no, until it's last it don't, week, don't, it's Twitter. Okay, well, I'm just saying, uh, up until last week, um, it was his profile pic was like him shirtless. Um, mm. er, it, hey, it, hey, in shape. Um, but then, like just just this last week, his it's went to his face now. Like he crop, it's still you can tell he's still shirtless, but it's like it's cropped into his face. Mm. Like he like, I guess I'll just crop in his shirtless image I've been owning for eight weeks now. That's so um, interesting. I guess so. It's I don't just, know if it's I don't know if it's they that. can't have and, the director of a of a of a show that's in theory targeted to children, or like that's a that you know, younger audiences that has the director being an OnlyFans creator. I mean, I guess I can see that being a PR nightmare if you're Disney. Um, but it's a, it, in some ways it's actually a more harmless theory than I thought it might have could have been in some way you know what I mean like I mean like you know you want to make an OnlyFans and make money be off your body and you can do that well go ahead but um, at least it wasn't like yeah. something more nefarious well, like here's he uh, a, a creep or something so here's uh, Jeff Snyder. Um, he's like a, a journalist. He briefly yeah. spoke on the matter. Here's his comment. I think he was probably difficult to work with and getting on everyone's last nerve. And I don't think the OnlyFans stuff helped. Uh, okay. um, S- Snyder also sense. reported that DeMaio was an absolute nightmare to deal with on a daily basis. 
and also claimed Disney executives didn't approve of his OnlyFans account. So, okay, um, okay, so, okay. so and, yeah, but, as all but, things, it's more, it's less black and white, more um, an amount yeah. of them of all. Well, and, and last thing I'll say is the OnlyFans account DeMaio has has is regularly mentioned. It's important to note that there's there does not seem to be a claim of anything abusive on his profile. DeMaio's OnlyFans account is said to be non-sexual in nature, but Snyder reports executives took issue with him using an account on the site to promote his Disney work. So there you that go. That makes some sense. I mean, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah, makes don't have some an, sense. If you want to work for Marvel, don't have an OnlyFans account. Well, and, and if you're going to have an OnlyFans, don't talk about how you work at Marvel on the OnlyFans, which just sounds like what he was doing. Yeah. Now, like, to be that, fair, that, that, he, like, it sounds like you know what I mean, like that. That it's like you like you keep doing no nos, but then you keep like double downing on them in a way yeah. that makes them worse. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, yeah, I mean OnlyFans account. There are, I mean, there is a. It's like Etsy kind of. There's a small sliver sure. on there that is. I don't know. It's like watch me make pots and crafts or something. Um, but it's not. It's not the majority of that, as we know. So yeah, I wouldn't know. I'm gonna yeah. take your word for it. Yeah. Well. Well, we do know because <laughs> there's a big lo- because there's a because there's a I'm big lawsuit, there's I'm a big lawsuit, playing. and everything. So yeah, I think we know, right, Daniel? Um, we're not down to to cultural things, but I can see from Disney side being like, yeah, even though you're not doing what most OnlyFans accounts are or seem to be, we don't want our showrunner just the headline alone. I mean, when I see it, I have to tell you that it was non-sexual before you made sure. the assumption it was non-sexual. You know, yeah, so. and I mean, at the, bottom, at the end of the day, if nobody wants to work with him from the top to the bottom, that that they're gonna look for a reason at that point, oh, you know, what I mean? and this guy yeah. had plenty of had given them plenty of like reasons no. to do it already. So, back do you to think X-Men. that they hire him back? Do you think they hire him back though? I mean, like, if, this show has I been crit claimed. I don't believe this part for one second. Most people are like, it's the best thing Marvel's ever done. It's not, go fuck yourself. But no, come on. Yeah, it's not. Stop. Uh, but yeah. of course, there's hyperbole like that. What do you think? Are they going to hire him back for season two and three, take their lumps or what? I mean, maybe he's already done the majority of what his con- contribution is for season three. That's the thing is like, I don't, is he the guy that's coming up with most of the major plot points? Are there other writers in the room? Like, I, I, it's it's hard to know like what how important was his involvement versus was he just the guy they got the idea off the ground and then he had a really good team you know I, I don't we don't know yeah I, I don't know my impression is that he is the guy that's okay. the, that's my so, that's the vibe I'm getting you know I don't know you know um, maybe maybe they hire him back but he's only allowed to work remote. Or something like that. I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think that'll stop yeah. you from being an asshole. But yeah, probably not. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I don't. I'm probably not. Just because if if he pissed enough people off the first time, I just this isn't a James Gunn situation where it was he was fired kind of wrongfully and kind of at a, an executive that just got his you know underwear in a wad and just had a bad day and just made a decision that then everyone else had to like clean up. You know, this is more like nobody likes this guy or wants to work with him. I mean, it, to me, it's not rocket science what they're doing with this show. You know what I mean? It, it's more about it's more about the, the guts or the initiative to take these risks more than these risks being like, oh, my God, I could have never seen any of this coming. You know, in, in some right. ways, in some ways, it's still kind of cliche. It's like, oh, of course, Charles Xavier is still alive. Of course. You know what I mean? Like, like the, the, and of course, Magneto I mean, didn't die in Genosha. Of course he didn't. You know, like. Yeah, the, Gambit's coming back. I mean. Yes. Yeah, right. And so, like, you know, it's it's not like no one else could have figured out these ideas. I don't, or something comparable even, you know. It's more of just like he is the one that he's the one that had the set the guts or like whatever the to say okay let's do all of these things you know what i mean but i don't feel like anything he came up with is so novel that that someone else can't say okay here's the direction of this show we're taking risks we're doing big things we're we're leaning into the melodrama i feel like i feel like you know i feel like you and i could in some way step in and figure out how to kind of keep going in that direction even at that level you know what i mean and so you know 
like I, I think you'll have show... to shut down your OnlyFans account. So <sighs> yeah, that'll be unfortunate. I know. Yeah, yep. my my feet, my feet, OnlyFans. Oh, only feet. Yep. yeah. Um, yep. and so uh, anyway, yeah, I, I I don't. My gut instinct says they want to get him back and that they can kind of continue this in the direction it's going. And and, and <clears> it, it, it again, it's not like. Everything was excellent. They did everything to an excellent level, right? The voice acting was great. The writing was really good, better than it had to be. The animation was great. But it's not like any of this is like none of it's – we've never seen any of these things before. Kind of like we've seen great animation. We've seen great acting. We've seen these things. This is just it all coming together and working really nicely because they're all just kind of firing at their good cylinders. And I feel like that's not rocket science. It's just a good team – uh, a good idea. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What I'm do, waiting what patiently. You... So I can, Dude, I'm waiting patiently. So I can... <laughs> our YouTube listeners are, yeah. would, are, would know. Um, you're right, Daniel. It was excellent. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. yes. Thank okay. you. I waited See, a long time. You were like for doing this, and like I was like, "Are you like making?" He, so you oh, know, like a audio like listener, vampire. Yeah. Yeah. So he was holding up his pencil or his pen and his finger, and making a little cross. That's what I thought it was—a little cross. So I was like, "Are you? Did I say something blasphemous?" That's what. That's Are you what saying I have little fingers? You said a little um, cross. What are you saying? I, you, you know what? I'm not saying anything, man. You, you know, I'll let you look what Bo DeMille has do done that. to us. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, well, I want to say I I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to season two. My favorite thing about next season will be if Bo is on it. And people don't like it as much. The people who are uninformed and say, you need to bring back the original showrunner when he actually showrun this season. So that's what I'm I'm waiting for, those articles mm-hmm. or those those mm-hmm. comments in the comment section. So yeah, if you haven't yes. watched it, if you're a fan of X-Men or if you're a fan of the original animated show, this will be right up your alley. And the ultimate- just Marvel, Mar- I mean, I feel like Marvel animation, it's good. It's just good. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's just it's just oh hey well done and fun D- yeah. and DC has always been good in their animation yeah. sector yeah and then it's been flip flop Marvel has always like in terms of like their direct to DVD movies yeah. um yeah and some other things they've absolutely dropped the ball and this is like this is one of if not the best any things they've ever done so kudos yes. to them yes I do want to kind of hop over to a different topic though since we have time let's do it. I want your thoughts. This is a little bit of old news, but that's how we do it. We bait you with like X-Men stuff on the thumbnail, and then we drop some old news. I want your thoughts online recorded for your future boss, James Gunn, about what your thoughts are on the Superman costume. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I want. Uh, that's great. Um, yeah. Listen, I think this is pretty overblown, guys. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I know there's been a lot of debate. A lot of memes, which have been funny, um, and all that kind of stuff. But to me, at the end of the day, it's like it's a promo picture. Like the, the you know, the, so you know, if if uh, to catch listeners up, if you're if you're not aware of what we're talking about or or, or tuned in, they they released the first official picture of James Gunn Superman. What's the actor's name? Uh, um, David Corn Sweat. Corn Sweat. Corn Corn Swooperman. Um, and, uh, he's sitting in a chair in this like really nice room with these giant windows looking out to the city and there's some giant alien monster thing in the clouds, like shooting a beam down and he's putting on a boot or like finishing putting on a boot and looking, I don't know if it's like tired or like maybe a little like, uh, like oh here we go again kind of like like exasperated almost a little interesting look um and right it's and you know I, listen i i have some critiques like i think like the superman suit doesn't look great to me um it's kind of like it looks like um it looks like the kind of like the eternals almost uh suits it kind of reminds me of um where it's like it's like really thick fabric or like, I know it's probably supposed to be some sort of like protective whatever shit. And then it, it was kind of like wrinkled in the shoulders. Like it, it didn't, it looked okay. It looked okay. I didn't love it. Um, but like everyone in the internet is just rolling around and going ridiculous over the fact that 
there's a monster outside and he doesn't look like he's in a hurry. Like, like the, the, to me, everyone is dissecting this, like this, like this, this one promo picture, like as if like the entire plot of the movie is represented in it. And for one, I, for, it's a promo picture. They, this, they said, okay, we need a photo to release something. Let's just like grab somebody over here and take a photo and do some Photoshop shit. Like I, 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 I doubt, for, okay, I'm sure there is probably something in the clouds that shows up like that in the movie at some point, perhaps. But to me, like, just watching him suit up like this, um, it's almost like meta at the level of, like, we have a new Superman suiting up for the first time. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it I, yeah, at the end of the day, I just think it's overblown. And I think that um, <clears throat> it's just a promo picture. And I think I, I get some of the critique, but I think the, the people that are like, you know, and of course, you know, on the internet, you know, everyone's got opinions and everyone screams them, but you know, so many people are being like, and this is how we know the movie will suck because, you know, like, and, and just like, this is the beginning of the doom of the DC of guns, DC, especially Snyder bros that can't let go. Um, yeah. Anyway. So that, that's my opinion. I think it's all, much ado about nothing at the end of the day. So much ado about nothing. I, I hope almost now that they write in some joke in the movie about how stupid all this is. That would be hilarious. If they like, I hope they don't. I don't meta. Okay. Fine. I hope, Cause I don't want meta shit like that in my superhero movies. Um, yeah. I mean, just a couple of things. One, I definitely agree that people are bloating out of proportion. It is a image. Um, it is it, whatever. I do also think, though, that James Gunn in particular, they should have had the foresight to be like, okay, let's look at this first image and let's talk about all the ways it can be perceived and like, and like, and like test share it. Like, hey, what do you think about this on my phone? What's your thoughts about this? Like, there's many, if there's easy fans like me who just, I would have said, like, Hey, like, yeah, I get the idea. The idea is that Superman is an every every man, right? This guy is going to work. He's putting his boots on. He's like, he looks beaten down. His costume is scratched up. All those all those kind of things. Um, but it is odd that we have this big thing happening behind him because because I, not because I so much care about it, but I know that there's going to be people out there who's going to say exactly what they said and like this guy is basically sleeping. This guy is not in action. I know it's stupid. I know it's dumb. I don't think there's going to be a, a moment in the movie where Superman is taking his time getting ready to go fight somebody. I don't think so. I could be wrong. I could be eating crow in a year. Um, I just think it was an oversight on their part, and it's kind of bit them in the ass. You do not want you do not want to start your first image from your new, brand new universe being this divisive. You just don't want it to happen. You're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. I mean, it, it's it's both. It's true that both it's being overblown, but it's also true that they should have known it would be overblown. You yes. know what I'm saying? And like, there's and just like too it, much writing on this. Like, it's just it, like it's, this, it's, it's his first. It's James Gunn and what's his name's first new D, D, DCU movie. You know what I mean? It's the beginning of the new universe, not technically, but I guess uh, it, in in any meaningful way, as far as like you know, James Gunn rebooting characters that have been other people for so long. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're exactly right. It, it, it's silly how much people are, are overblowing it, but at the same time, they should have known that would happen. And it's an easily avoidable mistake. They could have just chosen a different pose or a different idea. You know what I'm saying? I've like, seen some, it could I've have seen been some great photoshops of like this oh, same thing yeah. on, on a farm. Or this same thing and just a skyline and no alien in the background or whatever this thing is. Sure. And so, and those things right yeah. there would have mitigated everything. And, um, yep. and, and also just now me critiquing it on like my preference level. I don't think the alien thing looks super exciting or cool or something. I don't know. Do I mean, we, don't we, don't we know who the villain's going to be in this? It's Lex Luthor. It's okay. Um, but, but that could mean that doesn't like, mean he's, yeah, he, that, that he always has a different what what's he doing this time to win it's never him himself well there's there's like that but i don't think he's the only villain i think he's james gunn i've read all his tweets he's very particular in how he says things and then later he's like i never said he was the only villain 
I just said he was the villain. So like, you know, that that's how James Gunn operates on on Twitter. So I, I think he I don't think he's the only antagonist. Well, I don't know what that means, but I don't think he's the only one. Now it's costume wise, it looks like they're taking multiple different inspirations from multiple different, you know, things. I agree again, this is this is Superman. You don't ever see a superhero typically like this. You always see them. They're already suited up. They're already walking out. They're doing the badass walking movement. You never see the them putting the boots on. That's for sure. Yeah. You never see that, especially with Superman, right? I mean, theoretically, you couldn't see it because he'd be so fast. So it that's I like the idea because you know I think a big inspiration from James Gunn is All Star Superman, which is a Superman that um, it's the iconic, famous thing is that I think Grant Morrison wrote it. And he saw a Superman cosplayer at a convention and he was like sitting on the corner of a, a something of a, a ledge or something. And he was like chilling, like he was leaned over and it was like, he was just a, a guy at a convention and, J- and Grant Morrison said, wow, that's so interesting. This, this image of Superman just being a guy and not being this symbol or whatever, just being someone who's trying to do the right thing and whatever. So that's where all this inspiration comes from. Um, I don't have a super solid answer yet on the costume. I need to see him stand up and give me sure. a Superman pose before I can make that. I don't think it's going to be, I mean, I, I went back and like, I was like, Oh, it's not that bad or whatever. And you start looking like Henry Cavill's first um, Superman suit, his reveal. And you're like, man, Henry Cavill looked fucking awesome in his first Superman suit. Like he really did. And um, it was very, I, dark, I like it. Right. When it, it was just like kind of, emo it was Superman. It was, no, it was dark. Like the the colors were muted, yes, but they, you know, I like. I, I'm both ways. I like the, the the tights, like the the underwear. Yeah, I like it without it. Like I'm I'm fine either way. Um, and um, I didn't you hate, know, gun, uh, you know, Snyder's design for Superman. I didn't. I no, I don't was, either. Even even the the version of the character that he is, which is kind of this lonely old soul that you know isn't isn't. All, you know, doesn't ever give up, but isn't like peppy and upbeat, you know, necessarily. Yeah. And like, you know, the, the, you know, the grass is always greener kind of character that I think yeah. a lot of people or like a lot of super, like a lot of, you know, Superman comics are like, um, and so, but, yeah, it'll, it'll be, I mean, but I, and, and, and here's the thing I will say it is, it does seem somewhat difficult to take that, um, you know, Superman's a hard character. Because he's perfect, yeah. you know what I mean. Like he doesn't have flaws. He's Captain really. America. He exactly, but even but he, but even he's more of an issue because at least Captain America, like people are stronger than him and have more powers. You know, and sure. Superman's the strongest superhero or one of the strongest always. You know, and he's always making the right decision. He's always on the side, at least in his comics. Um, he's always you know you know making the right call, and so like taking him to a darker place or taking this darker version of the character does present some more obvious ways to make it maybe interesting. You know what I mean? To, to put him in situations where it's not just easy to always make the right decision. I mean, I, I actually, I know a lot of people didn't like it. I liked the ending of man of steel. I liked him having to kill Zod instead of letting Zod hurt innocent people. I liked that. That, that to me is a good way again of, of making him, you know, he he still made the right decision, but it was a it was a rock and a hard place. It wasn't like there was a clear, just feel good way out. And so with Gun, from what it seems to be leaning into more of that good boy, you know, kind of Boy Scout Superman, mm-hmm. I I trust. I, I mean, I, I Gun hasn't let me down yet. He really hasn't since he started doing superhero stuff. But it does seem like a really a, a steeper hill to make that character feel interesting and relatable, if that makes sense. I 100% agree on that. I will say I, I love Man of Steel. I'm a Man of Steel apologist. Um, I think it might be Zack Snyder's best movie ever. Um, but I, I, I disagree. And in in, if I had a complaint, it would be I wish he didn't kill Zod at the end. Um, I'm okay with it, sure. And time, I've, I've, I've come to be okay with it. But I think that is fundamentally one of the ways that Superman is set apart from other heroes that he would have found a way, just like Batman, he would have found a way to not kill somebody. Um, but as far as James Gunn nailing it, I have faith. I think I'm more worried about the filmmaking than I am about the story. Hmm. Like, I don't think I could handle Suicide Squad filmmaking 
on Superman. I'm worried about the score. The guy that got to the score, I haven't been impressed with yet. Um, that don't mean that that doesn't mean he's not talented or he has good work. I just things I've heard on you know, so like there's just yeah. so many little things that like they all have to come together and, and I just don't know yet. Um well, and you're right that like this is the first James Gunn project that needs to feel the least like a James Gunn project. Everything that he's done yeah. and succeeded has been very James Gunn. And yeah. and and his it, it leans into what he's good at and his own kind of you know humor and and inclination stylistically whether it's suicide mainly suicide squad but you know guardians of the galaxy especially they're they're gory they're gross they're you know uh irreverent you know what i mean they're they're sarcastic and really none of that fits in a superman movie and so you know it is going to be it can james gunn make a movie outside of the james gunn mold that is still good i'm scared yeah, no, it, it, it it's it like when you put it like that because you're like, oh yeah, James Gunn, he hasn't failed. But then you're like, well, that's because he just makes what he's good at every time. You know what I mean? And and this yeah. is this is a this is, yeah, we'll see. I guess you know what I mean. Um, I mean, you know, he has seemed, you know, since they hired him and before they hired him, he has always seemed like he had a very clear vision of what he would do as Superman. And from what he, the way he's talked about it. He doesn't talk about Superman like his other characters are. Like, you know, just in the in the things he said online in the past few years, he he seems to get it, right? I mean, he's you know what I mean? Like he he is saying what, what all the right says, things. What he says is perfect, yes. I think and, and so the, you it's know what I would again, be saying, yes. Again, it's like <laughs> There's there's good signs, but it, it is still it's a big question mark. I mean, and, and it's like it's because it's not only this; it's like then the bat, you know, Brave and the Bold will come out somewhat time after that. That'll be another well, James Gunn directed movie, right? Like it's and another one that's should not feel like a James Gunn movie, and really even shouldn't feel like a Superman movie. Well, he's like not he's own... not he's not confirmed or anything to direct Brave and the Bold. Oh, he wrote Don't... it though, or his writing. No, there's there's no script for it. He's oh, okay. he's not confirmed to direct anything beyond this movie. It would surprise me if he directs Superman Legacy. I have a feeling he'll he'll start it, but he'll let someone else take over. I'm right Superman here, James. Superman Legacy. Sorry, it was called Legacy. It's now just called Super Superman. I forgot. Oh, oh, oh um, okay. it was Legacy for like two years. Now it's just Superman, which I think is a better title. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I mean, no, I mean, this is you know, I get the inclination to announce your whole slate, and then yeah. all that kind of stuff get get people excited. I also think like. Man, this I don't know if this movie can even do good financially, even if it's amazing, just for the fact that the last ones haven't done good. And, and you have to always, yeah, it's like Batman Begins, right? Batman Begins, I think, is a fucking amazing movie, and then it's also an amazing Batman movie. That movie made like 400 million dollars because yeah. right before the end was the thing called Batman and Robin, you know, yeah, yeah. And so, and then it wasn't until The Dark Knight that made one billion dollars, and then Dark Knight Rises right. made also yeah. the same amount of money, billion dollars. So they have to also have the foresight be like, we know this movie isn't going to do well financially. What matters is that we just start on the right foot with fans for the most part. Yeah. They need like an 80% more Rotten Tomatoes, and they have to be able to take the financial hit because I think it's coming. And then they got to hope that, I mean, there's a lot riding on this, you know, and that's not even yeah, counting. I mean, the, the, you know, if this flops, what do they do? It flops hard, but especially financially, but even like you know, critically, or with the fans, like you know, it, it, it's 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 it, a it could change the, the entire thing. plan. I mean, it it, it could. It, there's a version of this that flops so hard that like <laughs> that Warner Brothers says we're just going to take a break from superhero media besides animation or something like well, that. Hey, you know I what mean, I mean? Like. They just announced this week that Supergirl, or Super, yeah, Supergirl, or Superwoman, it comes out twenty twenty six, and they, you know they've already cast her as the girl. I think it's Millie Alcock. She's the girl from Game of, or you know House of Dragon, the younger version. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, she's in, and I guarantee you she'll be in a post credit scene as Supergirl in Superman sure. movie. So it's sure. interesting. We're getting we're getting Creature Commandos, I believe, this fall, which we're going to trailer for that next week. And then they're shooting Peacemaker season two right now with James Gunn helping the first episode or so. And then we're getting exactly. Superman. And then we're getting um, Super Supergirl. Uh, and what's interesting too on the on the Peacemaker side, 
um, Frank Grillo, who was Crossbones in Captain America 2 and 3, I um, mean, it made an appearance in Endgame. Uh-huh. He is going to be Rick Flagg Sr., which is Rick Flagg's dad, who sure. Peacemaker killed. He'll be the, the lead in Creature Commandos, and then he'll be in Peacemaker Season 2 in his live action. Sorry, people, people are calling me. And and he will probably be trying to hunt down Peacemaker in Season 2 for killing his son. That makes sense. Which means Peacemaker and Suicide Squad is canon. So... Well, didn't James Gunn say that anyway? Well, he said the season one was like 80% canon or 90% canon, which was yeah. everyone kind of assumed meant like the, the, the scene with the Justice League is the part that's not canon anymore. Um, yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. I, I'm still waiting for answers, honestly. I think that's what I heard. Is like He's like, it's basically canon except for like one or two things, but like everyone's assuming it's like, let's oh, yeah, yeah, that's what Justice said, League was but... in it. But then it, season two is canon. I thought was what he said. Like yeah. it is, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is, it, and then like, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So it'll be. Is he voicing his character in Creature Commando? Same guy. Yes, that's yeah. cool. I like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah the, the deal is, if you're hired uh, in for voice acting, mm-hmm. you're also going to play the live action version, and you're going to be in the video games, and you're going to be in the movies, and I like, like that. that's that's that's, that's the cool. deal. Um. Even in the, vi- I mean, does that mean all DC video games now have to be? canon or i wonder if that's gonna no be like it some just, video games no it just means only canon dc games um again we have we've, we've talked before on this podcast oh, about yeah, this yeah. like yeah that's a taller order to ask than almost anything else he's done is trying to line yeah. this shit up yeah, yeah, yeah. with video games or whatever it's cool. and make all that work it's really cool hey i yeah i think hey I'll, let's go to space tomorrow that's cool you know like but <laughs> can we i don't know you know right, so like right, yeah yeah I, I don't I get you. I think it's a harder ask than he thinks it is, but maybe sure. maybe he knows something we don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about it. And uh, just because I mean, Superman, it's James Gunn. And um, I'm very, very curious as to as to what happens with it all for sure. Indeed. Well, it'll be it'll be an entertaining ride no matter what, even if it's bad. Yes, it will. It'll be an entertaining ride. We have a little, or a little over a year. We'll probably get some footage at the end of the summer, maybe at Comic Con. Yeah, it's just probably like, a thirty second teaser. I'll probably just be like, "What's him the isn't line. What's the thing that happens in August? Isn't there another big or like? Uh, oh, never mind. I was thinking of Disney stuff that happens at some point. D twenty three. Yeah, that's, that's there is some Marvel stuff that was announced. That's kind of relative. It's not kind of. It is relative to us. We won't talk about it. The last thing I want to say, we'll get off here in only thirty more seconds. Is I don't think this is the final Superman costume. I hmm. think this is this could be something he gets from Krypton. That I mean, he's wearing the Kingdom Come symbol, which is which is like you know more uh, angular. It's more stricter. It looks look like, as a, like an S. Looks well, it looks a like a symbol, which makes yeah. sense. Like, right, Krypton wouldn't have an S on their fucking T-shirt. And I kind I of, this. I kind of like the idea that it was never an S; it was just a symbol. Like, well, that, that, putting that, an S recent... on your chest is a little hokey. <laughs> well, I don't know. The, just, I don't know. It's just me, the, but I mean, well, the opposite that it's not an S. That to me is a recent thing. It's always been an S until the last fifteen years. It may have been the movie. Maybe it may have still even did that, where it's like. It's not an ass. This this happens to look like an ass, and it means oh. I like that. I kind of like that. Yeah. Well, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's what it is. I think it's. This is yeah. the symbol of uh, yeah. the House of L. I think at the end of the movie, I think we might get a more traditional Superman costume where it's sure. the ass, and he's like, sure. "I'm gonna lean into Superman." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, I think sure. we might get that. I think he might. And, and the costume right now has like lines in it. It feels kind yeah. of more like not armor, but kind of like looks more military. And, yeah, military. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that it's like, you're like okay, well, let's uh, let's lean into the I'm a hero thing more. I don't know. We'll see. He might not even be able to fly until the third act of the movie. He might just be jumping really far. You know, that's how Superman originally was. He just jumped really far, and it looked like like, like Hulk. It looked like he was flying. He was really just leaping like over tall buildings. In the in early a comics, battle. he wasn't. He didn't have the flying power. He was just he just jumped. Movie. He just jumped really fucking high and far. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, when so did, I could see that. flying get added to his abilities? Um, I don't have the answer for that. Like, I'm sure it was very soon after, but 
I yeah. don't have the gut answer for that. And I, gotcha. I think I worked about early, early days. How can our listeners write into us, Daniel? Listeners, you can write into bit.ly slash two for one mail and let us know what you thought of X Men 97 season one or the corn swooperman suit. Or anything else that we've been mentioning today. Been a lot of a lot of DC, a lot of Marvel. Let us know what your thoughts are at bit.ly slash two four one mail. And if you can't hit us up at our bailey, you can always find us in the comment section below. Again, youtube.com slash at two four studios. It's the best place because we want the content. And relatively soon, I think, in a couple of weeks, maybe, maybe a month. We'll be dipping our toes back into Star Wars with the Acolyte. And let me tell you, yes. I'm not excited for this show, so I can't wait to talk about it. So we'll see what happens with it. I have I have no interest in this at all at all, actually. Honestly, I've I've barely even kept up with any of the promotion. Yeah. And same, that's just same. kind of where I'm at with Star Wars right now. Like I just Yep. They've got work same. to do to make me want to be that uh, up to date with what's going on. I, I mean, I'll watch it. Obviously I'm going to see, I'm going to check it out. Um, but yeah, you know, did you see just as an aside that like George Lucas was quoted as saying his favorite thing Disney has done with star Wars. Is I don't believe, I just don't, I just don't believe it. You know, I saw this a couple of days ago and I was like, no, you didn't George, George, are you getting too old now? George? And let me just tell you, there's, I've been seeing a new narrative online that we were all being too harsh on Obi-Wan and it's actually pretty good. And I just want to say, that's just absolute bullshit. It, it, you know, some people are like, well, they only talk about these certain moments. They talk about the Leia chase and they talk about something else. And it's like, no, 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 no. The whole show was so underbaked. It was, it was so underthought. Every idea was like the most boring version of anything you could think of for how we would tell this story. And it was just a mess. There was, there was a couple moments that were cool and fun. But everything around it to me was just like, if you're going to give that much effort, don't even try. Like that's to me, like it, and maybe that's the part of why it's so offensive is that like, it wasn't like, it wasn't so bad that you could like make fun of it, but it was like, it was trying to be something, but it was just so, again, under thought out is almost like what I, what I lean into that. Like, it just felt like it was offensive that they would make something like this that that and listen i i know maybe i'm just like you know uh, the obi-wan movie the obi-wan tv show was to me always like one of the coolest things that star wars had like left on the table you know what i'm saying that like we've never seen this period he's one of the coolest characters that exist and they got ian mcgregor back they got hayden christensen back for that and so reddit people and other communities across the internet no it wasn't as it, it was as bad as we said it was maybe worse and um george lucas i think you're just a big ass troll that's what i think i think i think you just enjoy riling people up at this point so i don't i don't know if you actually said it first of all second of all i recently in the last two weeks because this is what I do. I've made River watch every single lightsaber fight. And it's all Star Wars. And we rewatched episode one last weekend in honor of its 25th anniversary. And I also watched the Obi-Wan Kenobi fight scene with Darth Vader. And it was like the, it was a, it was the abridged version. It was just their fight scene. Yeah. And none of the, the talking. The, well, none of the talk. Well, I mean, there was the talking, but none of the bullshit of like, what's her name? Going oh, yeah. Reva. Going to kill Luke Skywalker, which is a that's fucking right. tragedy. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was just their fight scene, and I was watching it. And of course, there's like, you know, there's like every now and then I'd get like, oh, that's cool. My brain, like my brain would like whatever. But then yeah. I'm like, I just watched Revenge of the Sith the other day, and all these fight scenes, and like, holy shit, like that is the one thing what? the prequels still have done better than everything else. Uh, well, okay, there was some pretty cool fight choreography in Last Jedi. That's one of the things. The fight with it is good. with Ray and and uh, uh, the Crimson Guard, Kylo. Yeah. And the, yeah, that's a really awesome. But the prequels be, be, turned lightsaber lightsaber fighting into what it became, which is like like this like air, acrobatic art 
of like it looked more like a dance and it looked more like you know some intricate martial arts than it did like sword fighting you know and it became yeah. like badass look like the people that were good at it were yeah. badass you know what i mean especially like yoda in episode two like flipping sure. around and in shit three. like that yes uh so i i, like, I get there's this weird thing of like trying to bridge because you know we got the new hope i mean we had their lightsaber style where it's like the jedi style dies off and so it's more like cross guard kind of like medieval i get trying to bridge that i get they had like a somewhat of a faster pace in the sequels but i say bring it back baby i say it's I okay think, to bring it back i just think they let's, don't let's have, do like, it that's the one thing that I do feel like, you know, th- this has kind of come up with the Fallout show is like this idea of like lore creep, which is like the idea that lore naturally changes over time as like new creators and new people get their hands on it. And like, I think you got to be okay with some of that. I think it would be better just to like make lightsaber fighting cool as fuck and just kind of ignore yes. what it looked like in the original movies. We don't we don't yes. have to make it like, oh, yeah, well, there's a realistic reason it looks stupid. <laughs> You know, and boring right. and un, un, non-exciting and also not deadly to anyone. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I just I just think, like, at some point, guys, just make cool shit and don't feel like you have to explain everything. Anyway, so just another little rant. So, yeah, I mean, and I do enjoy some of the sequel fights. Just, you know, like, there are most of them are well-crafted. They are. I love I love Luke in Mando Season 2. Um, it, that, that's a good like healthy balance between the two where it's kind of faster paced and it kind of looks sexy yeah. but I agree like I want to get back to the cut scenes for like Knights of the Old Republic and yes. like I want some crazy shit where people are just doing John Wick style shit with lightsaber. and I want them like I using want. the force with their lightsaber more yes. like you know what I mean like making yes. it spin Let's with the it. force and like you know being like Kratos with his fucking you know axe yes. and God of War where he's you know they're throwing it and making it come back and shit like like that yeah man i, I agree you know, we, I, I mean like listen like uh you know uh jedi survivor and and jedi fallen order have given us some really good lightsaber combat and it's been more like what's been great about that is you could choose different styles some was more like yes. rigid some was more flowy and stuff like that so um anyway lightsabers are so cool that's that's Dude, the, been, that, that's been, the that's the big thought on this podcast. Lightsaber. I've been whipping mine out. My collectible Luke Skywalker. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Jedi lightsaber. I've been turning on, and me and River been running the, running around the house killing bad guys. Is what he says. Of course, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so uh, it's been great, listeners. You are very lucky. You got a Star Wars, a Marvel, and a DC podcast all up in, into one today. How lucky are you? You're so lucky. You should, you should pay probably us subscribe three extra times this month. <laughs> oh man. That's a lot, Daniel. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> so on top of what you, the, the money you usually give to us, give us three yeah. more times that. Wow, I feel I feel spoiled now. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, listeners, my name is Donovan Thompson. I'm Daniel Wingfield, and we have spoken.